grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Frederick Allen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In baptism, Frederick Allen received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Please join in the old rugged cross.
Please be seated for a moment. Please rise. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our brother, that he may share in Christ's victory, and let us pray for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Alan, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The man, though he die early, shall be at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time nor can it be measured in the terms of years. Rather, understanding is the hoary crown for men, and an unsullied life the attainment of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who lived among sinners was transported, snatched away, lest wickedness pervert his mind or deceit beguile his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right, and the world of desire transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of wickedness, but the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. The word of the Lord. The responsorial is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in right paths, for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. to put my reading glasses on. <coughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we will also wait a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Alan worked hard, didn't he? That's my impression. As I read his obituary, that's the feeling I get. He was a hard-working farmer and a rancher, among other things in his life. And in listening to you speak about him, I gather he involved many of you in that hard work. And as it does on a family farm or on a ranch, that work pulled the family together. He was a hard-working man and a devoted family man. He was a loving husband to Rosie for 68 years. That's the grace of the sacrament of holy matrimony at work, if I've ever seen it. Couples really do need the grace of God to persevere through that many decades, through the good times and the bad, and still stick together. And though I didn't get to know Alan myself, I know Rosie a little bit, and I know she still loves Alan deeply. So, my condolences to Rosie. She's busy scolding one of the <laughs> great grands or something. Yes. <laughs> so, my condolences, Rosie, and to all of you on your loss. We gather today to pray for Alan and to say goodbye. Days like this really are a wake up call for all of us. They remind us, as St. Paul said in our second reading, brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven. None of us lives for this world. We're just passing through. 
And we should not desire to live and work entirely for just the goods of this world. We've got to keep our eyes on our real destination. As St. Augustine wrote back in the fourth century or so, our Lord's words teach us that though we labor among the many distractions of this world, we should have but one goal. For we are but travelers on a journey without, as yet, a fixed abode. We are on our way, not yet in our native land. We are in a state of longing, not yet of an enjoyment. But let us continue on our way and continue without sloth or respite so that we may ultimately arrive at our destination. We are in a state of longing, not yet of enjoyment. As much as Alan enjoyed it, and as much as you and I enjoy this life, heaven is greater. You and I, here and now, we should long for heaven more than anything else. Augustine also wrote that we ought to continue without sloth or respite in this life, because as he puts it, without, we are without as yet a fixed abode. Our abode, our dwelling place, our eternal dwelling place is not fixed until we die and face Jesus as our judge. See, it is in this life that we, because of God's great respect for our free will, that we can choose hell by our unrepentant sin, by obstinately refusing God's friendship, or, hopefully, we choose eternal glory in heaven by receiving God's mercy, by accepting his forgiveness for our sins in Jesus Christ. We must not forget that. God respects our free will, he doesn't force us into heaven. That wouldn't be love, because love cannot be forced. It is a fact that heaven is not assured for any of us until and if we find ourselves there, or at least on our way in purgatory. That is a stark but important reminder for us who are still here in this world. But don't lose hope. We remember today what Jesus said. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I go before you and prepare a place for you. I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Those are the words of God. It is his desire that, as he put it, where I am, you also may be. Jesus wants Alan in heaven. He wants you and I, someday, in heaven. And through the church, Jesus gives us every advantage on our journey there. So, you know, if you've drifted away from your faith in some way, I just urge you to take another look. Learn about Jesus and about all that he does for you here. Let us remember to live our lives every single precious day with the goal of heaven in mind, because in the end, nothing else matters more. Let us each strive to be a person of deeper faith, and let us continue to pray for Alan, that by God's mercy, he may be on his way to that dwelling place, to that eternal abode, prepared for him by Jesus Christ, our loving Savior. And may we, all of us, one day be able to join Alan there. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. In baptism, Alan received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. We pray to the Lord. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. The family and friends of Alan seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Alan. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us offer our prayer to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Alan, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed through human weakness, and in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have a couple of songs, and then we'll be processing to the cemetery in Blaisdell uh, for the burial. And following that uh, service at the graveside, uh, everyone's welcome to come to the hall in Blaisdell for a meal. And I was told there is some tables that are spaced apart for social distancing, uh, so um, be aware of that. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Please join in singing on eagle's wings. <clears throat> you who dwell in the shelter. 